It's Super Bowl season, baby, and you know what that means. It's a time for football. It's a time for hot wings. It's a time for beer. And if you're me, it's a time to talk about E.T. the Extraterrestrial, which is honestly a football movie if you think about it. Don't push it, Elliot. I'm not coming out there until your eyes are closed. More specifically, we're gonna talk about the time Progressive Insurance was sponsoring the Super Bowl halftime show and how E.T. sadly caused them to lose millions. You're probably thinking, oh yeah, E.T. was a huge hit in 1982. Makes perfect sense to put them in a Super Bowl commercial. But this Super Bowl did not take place in the 80s. This was 17 years after E.T. was first released in theaters. Progressive wasn't gonna let that stop them though. The year was 1999 BF before Flo, and the halftime show featured Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, Gloria Estefan, and Stevie Wonder. Wow! E.T., you haven't changed a bit! Party Miami style. Hola, Gloria. You wouldn't know it with the way E.T. was plastered on anything and everything you could imagine in the 80s, but Amblin was a little more protective of the character after that. Sure, they'll make a big hoopla during big milestone anniversaries of the movie, but other than that, E.T. appearances are a pretty rare thing. The head of marketing at Amblin, Brad Globe, even said in 1999 that E.T. had been in semi-retirement up until that point. Entertainment Weekly questioned whether E.T. was selling out with this deal. They spoke to Dave Studman, a managing director for a big consulting firm, who said E.T. has great selling potential. But quote, if you license E.T. to products that don't share his values, you risk undermining the appeal. Auto insurance is stretching it. I'm not sure if Dave has seen the movie, but if we were basing sponsorships on E.T.'s values, I think we all know what they would be shilling. But at the time, Amblin wasn't too worried. Brad Globe insisted, we're not doing knickknacks, and that the products would all have to, quote, promote something positive. The Progressive Insurance commercial was in partnership with the Buckle Up America campaign, and E.T. would be dubbed the Ambassador for Driving Safety. We're all gonna die and they're never gonna give me my license. <laughs> I'm sure their heart lights were in the right place, and there are a lot of great life lessons you can learn from watching E.T., but driving safety is not one of them. But the deal was made and they went on to shoot several ads for this massive Super Bowl campaign. It wasn't easy though. They couldn't use any of the E.T. animatronics from the original movie because the rubber on them had basically disintegrated. They had to borrow some E.T. animatronics from the ride at Universal Studios Japan, but they did bring back one important element from the original film. Cinematographer Alan Davio returned to shoot these TV spots. So how do you stay true to the story of E.T. while also shoehorning in a message about buying car insurance? The main spot picks up exactly where the movie left off. We see the spaceship lift off the ground and immediately cut to inside. Here we see several other Brodo Wasogians asking E.T. about life on Earth. You'd probably expect E.T. to tell them all about their new friend Elliot, or Gertie, or Michael, or hell even the dog. They've probably never seen one of those before. But E.T. goes on to roast all of us humans for still relying on the wheel. Like. Okay, dude, that's some pretty big talk from someone who was just getting scared of a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Those wheels were helping you a lot when you were driving down the street in a truck trying to get home. But I guess I can't blame whoever wrote this ad. I mean, there are only so many ways to turn E.T. into a car insurance salesman and none of them were gonna be subtle. They go on to talk about how kids ride bikes, adults drive cars, and sometimes those cars get into accidents. And you can probably guess where they're going with this. The commercial ends with an appearance from real-life astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Jim Lavelle. If they insist on making contact, Buzz, I hope they have insurance. The whole thing is cute enough, I guess, but a little cynical. The animatronics from Universal Studios Japan look great, but the goopy cartoon that's meant to be the E.T. we all know and love looks like something from an episode of Robot Chicken. It really makes the CGI from the 2002 remastered version of the film look great in comparison. There's a shorter TV spot from this campaign that feels a lot more atmospheric and reminiscent of the film. You get a lot of the shadows and warm light that Alan Davio was so great at capturing, and even the E.T. they used looks a hundred times more convincing. It could almost pass for an E.T. sequel if the whole thing wasn't centered around a progressive van. There are also a few teasers they showed leading up to the halftime show, and they're a lot of fun. It makes you wonder if maybe they should have just ditched the entire car insurance thing altogether and just made E.T. the official mascot of the Super Bowl that year. I mean, similar head shapes, 
similar textures, I'm assuming. E.T. may have helped with a power outage at that year's Super Bowl, but they didn't really help Progressive gain any new customers. Progressive's chairman, Peter Lewis, said, quote, We were not satisfied with the outcome of the effort. The company has a way of evaluating how many people call us up after an ad runs. We were disappointed. It's believed that Progressive spent upwards of $20 million to secure the rights to E.T. and keep them through the 20th anniversary in 2002. But after this big Super Bowl campaign was sort of a fumble, Progressive was ready to change ad agencies. They weirdly chalked up the failure of this ad to women being the primary deciders when buying car insurance. <laughs> and everyone knows, the Super Bowl is for the boys. <laughs> The Wall Street Journal spoke to the co-managing director of McManus Group's Brand Optimization Systems Group, who said, How on earth do you have a brand named Progressive and use a character that debuted years ago? Presume all those ET appearances are little holes being drilled in their brand boat. It was nothing! Based on their consumer feedback though, Progressive found out that people did like when E.T. was used to talk about safety issues, which was good news for the other part of their campaign. As part of their Buckle Up campaign, Progressive gave out free roadside signs so that cities could place them in high traffic areas, and for some reason, city planners in Connecticut ordered 4,000 of them. CTMQ.org has an entire page dedicated to the whereabouts of these signs, and a good chunk of them are still up on Connecticut streets to this day and one of them is hanging up in my office. Connecticut newspaper The Day did an investigation into how many signs are still on the streets. While they couldn't find that out, they did discover that seatbelt usage has skyrocketed in the state since the 90s. As of 2019, Connecticut was at an almost 94% seatbelt usage rate. The national average is only 89.6%. So maybe E.T. didn't boost insurance sales for Progressive, but they did something even more noble. Save the lives of countless Connecticutians. In more recent years, E.T. has had a successful holiday commercial with Xfinity in 2019, and this year marks the 40th anniversary of the film, so who knows where E.T. might show up next. <laughs> <laughs>